Doug Moore founded Jedi's Limited in 1979. Dave Loverock, who we have, uh, who, who is our guest, uh, joined the company in 1981. He is presently vice president of Jedi's Limited, working in tandem with the owner and president, Mrs. Deborah Wilcock, daughter of the late Doug Moore. In the 15 years that Mr. Moore and Dave worked together, they strived on improving products and services with a focus on learning how to install the perfect sheet of ice. When his mentor passed away in 1996, Dave kept the same work ethics and proven principles. Dave loves to share his know-how and has done so not only in North America's municipal and NHL facilities, but throughout the world and has contributed to the Winter Olympic Games from 1988 on. His vast collection of experiences would be too long to list, but hopefully this podcast might provide a glimpse of his track record. Would you have anything to add on this bio, Dave? Well, the bios sometimes uh, seem a little bit short and sometimes they're a little bit too long. So I'll keep it to the fact that I really uh, ran into Doug Moore um, probably in about the mid seventies, I was in the electronics industry and, uh, I, 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 Doug's, Doug's son, Lou Moore was uh, a musician and it, uh, he was, I was selling microphones and oddball stuff that he would use it for his job, but he introduced me to his dad. Uh, and he was the chief engineer at Maple Leaf Gardens, which all of a sudden, uh, you take high regard to that. He's a, uh, it was a hell of a nice make. He was a hell of an engineer. And it was an actually honor to meet the man that actually made the building operate. But the funny part about it was, and deep in the back of my head, I thought, maybe he could get me Maple Leaf tickets. <laughs> <clears throat> I, found it interesting, I found an interesting conversation with Doug. Um, he was always trying to improve the quality of ice and make a better sheet of ice. It was the, the point of his existence. I really do believe that. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, the thing was that he was working in a building that had been built in uh, oh, during the Depression, 1932, and in a lot of cases, uh, not much had changed in the building. And uh, yeah. he was trying to operate an old building with old equipment, and it was becoming a monumental task to, to actually keep the building running. And uh, mm-hmm. at that point, it was Harold Ballard and Harold didn't like to spend money, and Doug was trying to find ways to prove the quality of ice for the players. And, and I've never mm-hmm. met anybody other than Doug that, well, a few people in this industry. Never, Doug had this work ethic that just wouldn't mm-hmm. stop. He would he would spend the time with the people under his employment, that under his guidance, and trying to educate them to what things were happening in the building. And it was really more directed at the ice and the physical plant than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And one day he just said, uh, I happened to be sitting in a bar with him. He said, could you help me move a couple of hot water heaters? And uh, oh yeah, 42 years later, I met Judd Ice and have uh, taken all the information that he gave me and all of the practical information that I learned over a period of time. And it was really, really to help the ice maker and solve all of their problems. And that was his direction. Mm. Hey, meanwhile, did you sell him any uh, audio equipment? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I see. I, I sold him a microwave, <laughs> and I think okay. there was a couple. I think there was a couple of microphones for Lou. Okay, all right. So you were able to gain both ways. <laughs> yep, and, I, and it was a new. It was a new career. It was it. It was just something that interested me. It was, uh, geez, this is different. And who? Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's something you sort of get pulled into. And the more and more you learn about the industry. Uh, you realize how much detail there is in it. Yeah. And it's funny how you set your your path, you know, at a younger age, thinking you'll, you'll you know, probably have your career, make a career out of it. And some something, is, you know, changes that path and makes you reroute the direction into somewhere you never figured you you would go. I never thought I would be here now, 42 years later. Yeah. And the same situation happened also for Robert Boileau. He had to change his path as well. And if I go on to his bio, for nearly 30 years, Robert Boileau has been involved in many facets of the arena industry. 
owner of Robert Wallow Inc. until its sale to the manufacturer Zamboni in December 2019. His team in place still ensures the distribution and all related services. It was at the Montreal's Old Forum in the early 90s that Robert met Doug Moore, founder of the Jedi's company. The latter was present at all games of the Canadians to ensure the quality of the ice. From there was born an alliance which became official in 1994. Robert's encounter with Dave Loverock began from his vi first visit to the manufacturer. Today, Robert Boileau continues to be the exclusive distributor of Jedi's products in the province of Quebec, Canada. As with Dave, Robert takes pride in sharing his technique. Though concentrated on, in his own market, he has also accepted Zamboni and Jedi's mandates in various countries. He has also contributed to the 2006 and 2018 Winter Olympic Winter Games. Bonjour, Robert. Would you have anything else to add to your bio? Hello, Dave. Hello, Monique. So uh, after my study uh, on automotive mechanic and heavy machinery, I worked uh, for five years repairing a forklift and aerial platform for a company. And after I decided to start my own uh, company, uh, Road Service, in 1981. I started uh, to doing some service on the Zamboni in 1985, and I became a, a distributor, exclusive distributor in 1993. And uh, what happened, it's uh, the, one of my first customer was the uh, Canadian Montreal at the old forum. They had a old uh, HDB with a Volkswagen engine and a old uh, 520, so they need the uh, service. So, so Zamboni asked me to go and fix those machines. And that time, it, it, I met a man who completely changed my knowledge of the ice ring. This became a true asset to repairing and adjust the Zamboni on the ice and understand what I'm doing with the machine, with the wash water and all the, those equipment. This man was Mr. Doug Moore, who invited me at, at the, their uh, business in New Richmond Hill in Ontario to instruct me on the specific uh, Jedi's product, the ice paint, and the, the way to do the application on the ice, all the techniques. So I spent a few days there. It was also at that time when I met the Moore family. I met uh, Deborah, Linda, and Lou, who worked for the, their father. And finally, I met that man, Dave Lavra. It was to them that I gained all that information, the skill I have presently as an, an Iceman. So uh, Dave was, uh, very good with me because I didn't know nothing about painting ring and all those products they sell. So uh, that's the first time I met him. It was when I was there at the new Richmond Hill plant. So from two people back in the 80s who were minding their own businesses, one in the audio and the other one in uh, heavy machinery repair, life brought you together in the early uh, 90s and you finally met. And it seems like you've met in Montreal. How do you recount your uh, first meeting experience working together? If we can have uh, Dave's version on that. Well, I'm not actually quite sure because that's you're going back a long time <laughs> so I can, I, can, I can remember going to um there was a lot of stuff to do at jedi's when we were starting up it was a small company and it was just we were trying to get by trying to make ends meet there wasn't a lot of money available to us but we had worked with some of the clubs in the nhl and i think it was mm -hmm. i think it was rennie massacott that uh had Doug coming up to Montreal to give him a hand because there seemed yep. to be issues, there seemed to be issues with the ice, and one of the main issues was the fact that uh, Montreal Forum had a sand floor, so um, they oh, were yeah. having they were having problems with the floor on a continuing basis. As the season progressed, the floor would start to heave, and so Doug ended up going up there to try and help them out, fix all their problems. And uh, at that point, Doug was. Uh, 
we had just stepped into the manufacturing of ice paint. We'd been making it for a few years um, for some of the NHL buildings, but it all started to grow dramatically and it also included logos and uh, colored paints uh, along with the water treatment. So it was just a matter of getting to the building and Doug was going there regularly, but Doug wanted to show them how to paint the ice in a, in, in a hurry. And that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Time is money in these big buildings. How fast can I mm -hmm. do it and how quick can I uh, make it possible? I'm mm -hmm. not sure whether Robert was at the forum the day we went up there and painted it for the first time. I remember Doug hopped on a plane because his time was a hell of a lot more valuable than mine. I just loaded up the truck, put all the equipment in it um, and drove up to the forum. And, uh, and you're, you're impressed when you go into that building. It, uh, mm -hmm. it was a, uh, almost a, a, a sacred place for uh, a, a have fans uh, uh, pulling all the equipment with me, getting everything out and, and getting ready to paint the ice and Doug giving direction. And you, know, you want to make everything mm -hmm. look great, make it look exceptional. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what really, that, that, I'm pretty sure that would have been early 90s. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. I'm not sure of the actual date, mm -hmm. but it was uh, at that point. Doug had, I believe, had already met Robert, and uh, they had sort of firmness set up an alliance between the two of them to try and make better quality ice. There were some issues with the uh, training of the staff in the building to make sure that they were doing ice making principles a certain way, and uh, the Zamboni. Um, drivers at that time, I don't think had the, all the knowledge that they required to produce that high quality sheet of ice. But uh, mm -hmm. it uh, became a, a, it was a learning experience for both. And I remember mm -hmm. Doug, Doug was actually quite funny. He'd come back to the office and he had, he had a French dialect that he would put into the conversation, even though he wasn't mm -hmm. French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I gather when you, <laughs> you spend, a, if you spend a couple of days with Robert, you might start to sound like a Frenchman too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, Doug, that's Doug, true. Doug, Doug, Doug was a, he was actually a, a very friendly person, and he, and he only wanted to assist people, and he, he, he took him and him and Robert took to each other, um, like water and ducks, and I think it was a, it was a start of a great long term relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true, and 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 what I could say about Doug is because we spent time on the old forum, uh, and. And he always say, Robert, you should sell my paint and you should learn more about the, the, the quality of the eyes. It will be better for you, for the, the machine you repair. And he said, come and spend a few days in, 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 uh, new, uh, in, to my plan. And after, I'm going to send you somebody and you, we're going to make some demo and we're going to paint ring with you. So Dave came the first time he came. Uh, uh, to paint uh, the ring was uh, for a private college, a Collège Brébeuf, and he oh, has yeah. been my guide after for 20, 27 years. I remember that day when I, I at first I, I, I pulled the hose with Dave on the ring and do the, the line, and it, I was impressed the way he was working with his uh, white rolling shoes, tennis <laughs> rolling shoes on the ice, and his white band. So, uh, and I think we. That day, we, Dave and me, we, we kind of, and it was always a, a guide for me. He, and he's, Dave, always encouraging me with my great idea and advice. It's a, we, had a, we had a certain chemistry that, that yeah. worked, mm -hmm. worked together for both of us. Uh, and, uh, Robert's, Robert's was a lot like Doug. You want, wanted to, you want to learn. Like, everything is still a learning process. Every day you get up and learn, and learn something new. And Robert had that special attitude that uh, made it so enjoyable, and made the customer happy. <laughs> yep, the customer, the customer, trying to make the customer happy is sometimes a really tough job, and um, yeah. everybody, everybody, everybody worked towards that end. Yeah. yeah, but Dave, you you made life easy for Robert as well. You know, you're easygoing yourself, and uh, you get along with a lot of people, and it just it just went well. You and Robert together. Well, it's it's a it's a success of other people that is important mm -hmm. to me. I want mm -hmm. everybody to that I deal with. I want them to succeed. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, all 
the time, all the time when I have a, a, an idea, I, I call him and I say, what do you think about? And he said, yes, yes, try that and tell me if it's good, we, we, we're going to use it, that idea. <laughs> yeah, we tried, we've tried a number of different things and uh, Robert's come a long way on uh, with some great ideas. I, uh, we've, we've talked about uh, what we've made and manufactured, but I've got... Um, the, the whole aspect is if you've got a better way to do it, to make it easier, quicker, or less expensive, which is one of the criterias of the industry, it's it's good for the industry. Whether it's my mm -hmm. idea or not, it's about change something if you don't like it to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're try, we sometimes try to deal with our, our real issue in the industry is is the, the people we have to deal with, especially on the staffing end of it. And they're the people that, in most cases, need the training. Mm -hmm. And ideas go from one person to another. Uh, Robert, we have an employee in Quebec City, uh, Eric Perrault, who has come yep. up with some excellent uh, ideas, you know, especially he makes his own tools to, yep. to facilitate uh, the way he paints the ice, and he takes a lot of pride in that. So it's uh, it, it becomes um, contagious. Yep. Yeah. Yep. On another aspect, uh, and this refers more to your experience, Dave, you've been referred to as the Dave Love Rock. You've been referred to as the rock of the industry, the go to man for over 35 years. And Robert, uh, you've been referred to at least by our, our Ontario counterparts and uh, manufacturers as the French Connection for just about the same reasons and almost the same time. As Dave once mentioned, every building has its unique peculiarities. Tell us more about the challenges you both have had to face, both Robert and Dave uh both you and dave uh you've had to face them in in either different countries different arenas uh different times dave uh what would you say about that well the, the best part about this job is the experience you get at every site you go to um <laughs> you become versatile with working with next to nothing or going to a larger building that has everything and employees that have no knowledge at all. But it's the fact that you, a lot of these buildings that we deal with uh, were built back in the 60s and 70s and some of them in the 80s. And they were built by, not by engineers, but by architects that were trying to build a building for skating and they wanted big front lobbies and lots of glass. And, or they were just knocking together a small, a small ring. And they didn't take into account any of the, the fine details um, about a building. They, they weren't engineered for ice making. Uh, so, you, you know, there was bad sources of water, um, um, bad, bad buildings themselves that weren't insulated. Um, they had no dehumidification and uh, uh, undersized plants. Like a lot of these arenas that were built were made for ice that was a seventh month season. And that seven month season was starting in September and by the April it was all out. And now they're trying mm -hmm. to stretch the season from November right through to July. Right. And the hockey season has been extended and that's part of the issues that we have with some of these buildings. They weren't built for 12 months operation so that you had to endure this undersized refrigeration plant and overcome the problems with uh, lack of dehumidification, the poor quality that the envelope was built in. There was uh, no low E ceilings, no infrared sensors. All of these things came down the line uh, 10 and 20 years later. And they put these buildings together that weren't really conducive to producing a great sheet of ice. But uh, a lot of this stuff was overcome by uh, education, letting people know that they could do things differently. And, and as technology changed, we tried to drag it with us. Um, in some cases, it was a long, laborious trek. Uh, but uh, a lot of it had to do with the water quality and explaining it to people how important it was. And uh, the fact that the drivers are, are a critical asset to any facility. I think sometimes they're, they're forgotten. The, the Zamboni driver is virtually everything to the ice, ice quality. And 
I think that's where Robert really shone with uh, bringing people up to speed um, in the marketplace and worldwide. He, 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 Robert traveled and he's well respected just about everywhere he goes. I don't, I don't know anybody who doesn't talk highly of him. Well, this was the same for me in in, in the province. It's the same difficulty than they've had. The, uh, the difficulty we had is are in the recent years and new years working with old arena on the bad refrigeration system not uh, the dehumidificator is not strong enough poor quality of eye of uh, uh, of water uh, and especially uh, difficult when customer ask you to paint in uh, august when it's uh, very hot outside like a 86 or 90 uh, fahrenheit and sometimes it was raining and uh, leaking oh, all the water coming from the the roof <laughs> and uh, another problem we had is starting ice project ice painting project on new construction you arrive and the 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 slab is very dirty and just to try to get hot water or uh, the connection for the the, the hose it uh, was not there another thing we had during many years when they give you a large project like a memorial cup or big event for a world championship they ordering the uh, the uh, the logo at the last time and they think we, we could have the, the the logo the next day and uh, they don't leave enough time to paint and to build the ice because they they, they ask you to be there two days before the event and it's, they don't understand really how the, the job has, has to be done. And an, another thing has happened many times, it's the people don't have the experiment, so uh, the, the employer doesn't have the experience. So sometimes they, they wanna say, you're gonna use my, my people to paint the ring and they don't have the experience. Another thing we, we have, it's the, um, the, 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 the 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 people don't understand the new way we paint rink you know so they they I, we saw people uh, using uh, the the bad paint and now with the jedis we have special technique with the mixer and the sprayer with the boom and and this is the way we we work uh, for for the the arena working in that arena with with people who doesn't have the experience or older people who don't want to learn the new new way to paint the ring it's it's terrible and uh, sometime at the end when when we finish the job the customer are happy with the fine result and they are happy to recommend our team with the jedi's product it's it's all the time and um, facility we had we had different building like the Mille Gauche downtown in Montreal. You have to transport all the equipment on the elevator, <laughs> and uh, you have to do those job at night. So different project I did like in Cairo in Egypt. Uh, we ship all the equipment when we arrive on the site. Everything uh, they took my equipment. They cut the hose and, and the and they they. <laughs> everybody was walking on on, on the ice so uh, another project i did in spain we arrived for two for a painting for a week and when i arrived after the airport uh, when i came to the building no door no window <laughs> so the, the refrigeration <laughs> was not going on so uh, it took a week before we we could start the project so, uh, so shooting things like that happen that's, that's during the biggest, many years. That's the, that's the biggest thing is to overcome the problems that arise when you get to site, because very seldom the people on site really know what they're doing. Yeah. Now what I do before, like I, I have a project next week, uh, sometime I'm gonna go the week before, just be sure everything is clean, everything is ready, and uh, sometime I'm gonna I'm gonna phone the the day before just to be sure we have the right temperature on the ice on the slab. 
because the people say, yeah, yeah, it's cold, it's cold, but it's not cold. So uh, I I learned to not trust the people. <laughs> um, so it, it all comes uh, down to how you adapt versatility in finding solutions uh, and also um, coming up with uh, ways of convincing people that new methods more efficient uh, exist and speaking of new methods you both came up with innovative tools and mediums that make ice maintenance cost more cost effective and less time consuming how about sharing these with us uh, how about you dave well, we've had a, a couple of goes at it. We've um, tried to cut the time window down because what it became, became, became apparent to us was the fact that time is money, especially in these larger buildings. They want to change over. They want it done quickly. They want to move on. They want to get a concert in. They want to get a show. They want to have a hockey game. So if you can cut down any part of the process, the ice baking process, that means they can book the building uh, and make more money. So we came up with a couple of ones, that mainly the spray system on the cart um, and being able to uh, pump paint um, down 250 feet of hose and, and you can paint a rink the white within an hour. Um, for the lines and circles, we, we, we're still big proponents of uh, painting the lines and circles because that's where your most brilliant color comes from. So I started on the paint stick back in the probably the 80s or 90s and now the paint stick, I think we've sold over 2,500 of them or almost 3,000 of them. And it's just a simple device that allows you to paint a circle, uh, paint a line on the ice uh, with ease and, and with speed. And uh, we've also changed some of the other stuff. That we've added template kits that all you do is lay them down on the ice, follow the strings, mark your ice, so that you can actually put your white down, mark your ice, paint all your lines and circles, and in some cases, you can do it in a four-hour window. Um, I've got two guys that are painting out of uh, the Boston area that are under that four-hour window for white lines and circles, and that's uh, that's that's where you save the money. It's uh, less time-consuming, a lot less labor, and uh, it, it it makes the job a hell of a lot easier. We've also brought in some stuff like clear coat stuff for special events, which is like pink in the rink for supporting, uh, raising money for breast cancer and uh, black light ice paint for specialty events in uh, uh, the curling industry. But it's uh, uh, bringing stuff to market is sometimes a long and slow process. But once you get it down and if you bring it in properly and everybody let people try it, see what works for them, um, it makes the job so much easier. Yeah, and for me, uh, uh, after two years painting ring and walking, a thousand of, of steps, dragging a, a 200 uh, feet uh, hose across the ice, I, uh, with uh, three guys, I designed uh, my first painting application machine. So what I did, I, I modified an old Zamboni I took in trade, an old... Uh, uh, pallet machine with a Volkswagen engine and I install on the machine the the mixing system and the, the sprayer and and I could paint a ring with that name we named that machine the jet mobile and we man we paint the ring now with in uh, an hour and a half and uh, so so with no help, with just one driver, we could paint uh, the three coat, one coat of water, three coat of uh, of white, and uh, we could apply much water we want. And after we do the the line, and uh, after I did that, uh, after many years, I built another machine with the old uh, 400 uh, series machine. And after that, uh, eight or nine years ago, we decided to go with an electric uh, cart machine and uh, it go very well and we have three three crew now and like dave we arrive to the customer at 7 7 30 and four hour four hour and a half after the job is done and it is go it's very easy compared to when we arrive at the beginning to the customer at seven o'clock and uh, we we're still painting some logo at eight o'clock at night <laughs> so with the with best Robert, the best part about that is the video, and it's on TV. It's I think it's on the Discovery Channel with you and your 
Zamboni. Yeah. Cake yeah, the yeah. And at the, and the, I, I, I just find, I, find it late at night. You'd be sitting there flicking through the channels on your TV, and there's, hey, there's Robert on his Zamboni telling people how to paint their ice. It's a great video, <laughs> and, and you should be quite proud of it. Yeah, my daughter did another video last year too. Uh, you could see on the on the on the website. It's it's very nice. It, she did that with it just as, with this phone. <laughs> it's yeah. very nice, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So all the it's, it's going very fast now. So yeah. sometime we could do two ring a day with the crew. We could paint two ring a day. Yep. Mm. Another point in common is what you both uh, enjoy is that you both enjoy teaching. You're both at your best when surrounded by people seeking tricks of the trade. What are your views on this? Well, want to start, Dave? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. Education and the passing on of knowledge is critical to the industry. It's a, it's an imperative. Uh, I don't know how many places there's, what, uh, 5,800 ice surfaces in Canada and somewhere around 3,000 in the U.S. And you obviously can't get to them all, but there are a number of courses out there that are available uh, through um, the arena associations, through the Ontario Recreation Facilities, um, through uh, uh, USA Hockey training programs for everything from uh, the ice resurfacer, uh, uh, painting your ice uh, op operations in your facility. I believe uh, Zamboni also does some of their own training courses. I know that we had a very successful one up in uh, Somerset, Wisconsin with uh, Mr. Dale Hansen. Uh, a uh, true gentleman in the industry. I've been around um, servicing Zambonis. It almost seems like forever. Uh, has a guess for 40 years anyways. And um, he was a guy that um, he's got the hoist. He's got three machines. They got them all up there all summer long. They bust them all down right to the bottom bolt and then rebuild them. And um, mm -hmm. he does a great job. And he also has a training program, which on some years, I think we, we had like 85, 90 people out and it's really a two-day education program. So people can see what um, a conditioner looks like from the underneath, underside of it. So it shows you everything and he goes through it piece by piece. So people have that, that better concept of what they're trying to do. And the education part is, is, is critical in this industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, How about you, thing? Robert? Yeah, yeah, same thing for me. Uh, I believe that passing all my knowledge and uh, and making user customer happy is part of my DNA. With our paint sales and our sales team, we have developed a, a retained the arena curling customer with the Jedi's product and the tools. Another thing I have to say is uh, with our uh, uh, Zamboni and Jedi's operating uh, training program. We were the first to give that uh, program in the province of Quebec with the charter of number, the, the, uh, with the number of a permit. We, it is uh, officially recognized as a, a credible program uh, for the organization of the arena in the province of Quebec. We were able to report the cost of their early uh, compulsory employee allocation for ongoing education. And now uh, we, our training program is so popular that I, I involved in this uh, for 40 days a, a year, uh, plus plus all my my during when I do a, a, a training for the Zamboni, the first part is always we talk about paint because we have to teach the people you're gonna you have a blade on your machine, you're gonna shave. And under the ice, you have logo, you have line, and you have white paint. So you have to to teach the people. So now, for many years, when I start a, a training program for uh, the first hour, hour and a half, we talk about how to paint a ring, and after we talk about how to operate the machine. And like Dave said, the big problem we have it's the, sometimes it's the operator when they don't have the uh, certification on they or they didn't understand what they are doing on the ice, are they? Yep, that's that's the biggest part. I think that 
uh, training in a lot of cases was it's just handed down training. Somebody's told them how to do it, but they don't know how to do it to start with. They've been doing it the wrong way for 40 years. And so they treat the new, treat the new guy in and he wants to drive and they, they show him what they've been doing wrong for 40 years and pass that bad information on Zamboni driver to Zamboni driver. But if you yeah. know how to do it, if you know how to do it right, it's really straightforward. Sometimes the guy's got a machine for 10 years and you show him how to use the wash water system. And the guy say, what's that? What's that for? <laughs> it's like it's like having a hair conditioning in California in your car and you don't know you have a hair conditioning on your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. You're going to better have a quality uh, in your car if you use uh, the air conditioning. So uh, it's every now and then you get the guy. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, they, every now and then you get the guy that says, uh, I think that one of the biggest ones is the actually putting on the Zamboni blade and having it adjusted properly. There was oh, yeah. Gone to, they put the blade on and they put the blade on all the time. What are the nuts on the end for? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and more and more on my training, what I do is I start to teach people how to remove the ice at the end of the season. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes they don't understand they have a, a mesh logo on the ice and they just cut that logo <laughs> to the blade. So, yep. uh, so training is important for me. It's it's uh, it's is the thing uh, and now it's it's a law in the province of quebec nobody could drive a machine if they don't have a course and they don't have a certificate and that's what i do and another thing i, I start to do i do some evaluation for different city so they i give the course to uh, 20 25 person and after a month or two months i return to the city and we have an exam so i'm just sit on, uh, and I just beside the machine and go make your rink. And so they're going to put the water in the machine and I'm going to check how he's, he's driving the machine on the ring and how he's going to shave and how he's going to start the water and how he's going to get out of the, the ring and how he cut yep. the water. How he, and uh, uh, and uh, it's like an exam and I check the time. It has to be done in under 10 minutes. And I, I always say the same joke. If you still doing your ring with uh, in uh, 14 minutes and uh, you do a 12 or 14 uh, circle, it's better if you go to this work to the library, uh, to the <laughs> library of or, your or, city. I think. Or, yeah. Or try and resurface in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> go at the racetrack. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it, it, we so we have. Yeah. Both of you have uh, have traveled, and uh, so you've you've done you know a lot of work in your parts of the country. But you've also traveled. Are there any memorable paint jobs that uh, you'd like to tell us about? Oh, well, I guess the, I guess my first one would probably be the Calgary, where we um, at the Max Bell Arena. That would have been eighty eight or maybe eighty late 87 where we had to put three sheets of ice on top of each other there was a curling a figure skating and a hockey and it was uh, just the, the fact that you're layering three sheets into three and a half inches of ice was uh um well worrisome to start but it all got pulled off and the real part is we had good drivers great Zamboni drivers that knew what they were doing so when they were peeling off one sheet they weren't cutting out the next sheet but it's uh uh, and anything to do with the anything to do with the Olympics was a, we put it in high profile. The NHL is the NHL, but the Olympics are sort of a, a an outstanding aspect. Whether you're do, working on uh, the luge run or the speed skating oval, uh, uh, it's it's worked out uh, fairly well for us to. And the, the other part is you get to meet people that are, are of like mind. I know that uh, Robert and uh, Mark Messer ran into each other probably at Torino. I ran them in probably '88 in Calgary, maybe a little bit later than that. But here's another gentleman that is of the same mindset, that the ice quality and the appearance of the ice are, are critical to what we do. And uh, that was, uh, I guess, yeah, that would have been, and it, he, Robert spent some time with him, I guess, it, uh, with uh, the uh, Zamboni distributor in Italy with uh, at Torino in uh, 
Yeah, I had to paint a, a, a ring, a two rings for the uh, Paralympic after to change the logo and change the thing. And uh, it was funny because uh, they say we're gonna send, we're gonna bring two painter, but they were a painter for house. <laughs> They'd never been on the rink before <laughs> in Italy, <laughs> so it was funny. Robert, in Torino, you worked under Mark Messer, and uh, uh, as a as a as a driver, I was a driver at the Oval. Mark was re really good for me because uh, I think it's one month or two months before the uh, event. Uh, I think Frank Sanborn or Doug Peterson an email and say they need a driver there because uh, they miss one driver or something happening with one driver. So I say, yeah, maybe I'm, I know how to drive. I know how to repair the 552, and, uh, but never did that on a oval. So I remember the first day I'd been to the oval and uh, Mark take care of me very well, very well. Very, he was very good. And uh, every night I was, uh, practicing with the machine and uh, at the end i think it go well but a uh, few stress the few the, the three three or four first day was uh, was terrible for me <laughs> because it's, it's, it's not my first driver is not my first job eh? i i run a business i sold the samboni i sold the paint and i teach but it's the operator uh, for the oval, it's a it's a it's a special job. It's a special yeah. uh, way to operate the machine. But yeah, Mark was uh, incredible away. with me. Yeah, was very good with me. And after I was his mechanic, in in uh, when he had a problem with or an adjustment on his uh, machine at the oval in Pyongyang, I was the right man for that. <laughs> <laughs> with 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 Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you, Dave, uh, you must have been all over the world. Yeah, I've had a, a fair bit of travel out of this over the last 40 years. Uh, um, if there's a rink, I've usually gone there. But um, in most cases, uh, uh, we find that our, it's our European uh, connections that uh, have served us well. And uh, But let's face it, hockey is, is still, is, we still call it the Canadian sport. Like when you look mm. at uh, when you look at all the other places that have rinks, they're not like if you got a population town of five thousand people, you have a you have a hockey rink. That's not true anywhere else in the world. One thing we'd like to highlight with uh, Jedi is uh, the past uh, AGMs, the dist distributor meetings that um, uh, Jedi has held. Uh, they were they were precious to us. Um, and Robert, maybe you can tell us uh, how uh, we felt about those meetings. Well, for me, AGM was uh, something very special. I waiting for that every year, and the way uh, Deborah uh, organized that, it, for me, it's the reunion of not just distributor but was friends, and we had many people from different uh, places from North America and sometimes from Europe. And um, it, it was a time where we could talk about our, the product, our experience, and to share uh, our activity on each company. And another thing, it's, we discovered so many nice places in Ontario. I'm not a golf player, but a few times they had the golf uh, I don't say tournament because uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> just a game. And uh, especially one time we, we they brought us at uh, Vegas. It was the same time when we had the 50th anniversary of uh, uh, Zamboni. And uh, and uh, to work on on the, the booths or the ice. So it was a, another experience for me. And, uh, but uh, AGM for me was such a nice thing every year. And a thing I did because I was close from, from uh, Ontario, for me, it was only six hour drive. Many times I organized a trip for two or three days going to uh, Zamboni plan, see my people there. And I said, come back and stop at Jedi's and talk with Dave on new trick, new, new stuff and he always take the time to show me uh, 
different thing. I will. I was always impressed about their table with their refrigeration system, and they could show. We could paint on there. It's like a little uh, pool table, <laughs> and uh, I think that you still have that 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 table. Yeah, still, I don't, we still yeah? have the many rink. We still have the many rink, and every now and then we want to check something out. We we take uh, I, rem I remember Doug Doug Moore show me uh, how to apply uh, uh, pain on that table. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> We've, uh, and we after it was the next We've had yeah, the no. table around for a long time, and I think that it was Doug and a guy from John Cart from Simcoe that had it built back in the probably the 70s or 80s just to test stuff out, test ice out, test water out, test, and it turned out to be a paint table for testing different colors of paint. But it was, the AGM meetings were just a point at the time that we were all sort of looking for answers. And I thought that when we first brought the first AGM meeting in together, it was just a chance to bring everybody together to find out what everybody was doing and how it was working for them. Uh, there was a lot of good characters we had in line and we, we brought in a lot of people from all over the country. Uh, Doug out of California, Audrey from our offices out in Regina, Dale at r and Specialties, um, Patrick Deli at uh, Houston and yeah. George. And, yeah. Uh, and now we've added some other names to the list. There's uh, Dave West. George Arnudis. Yeah, George Arnudis. Yeah. He was he was a good guy. He was he's still and he's still painting for us. I, he's still lining mm -hmm. up paint jobs left, right, and center. He's, he probably will paint probably somewhere around the neighborhood about 45 to 50 arenas for us while keeping his job at Yale University. Uh, mm -hmm. The painting process is, uh, and he's George, he's just a, a, the standby guy and he's he's uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge. And uh, since then we've added a couple of new people and strangely enough, they seem to be Zamboni people too. Uh, Dave yeah, and out, out of Florida. And uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Remelius, uh, he's out of Kalamazoo. So he sort of crashes out to the Chicago area and back into the Detroit network. But our relationship mm -hmm. has uh, always been, uh, we would call it tight with Zamboni, and it's it's uh, it's worked out well for uh, for both ends. We we met Audrey uh, Audrey from uh, out west, Audrey yeah. uh, Hep Epner, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She take care of your plant. Did you, and you, so did mentioned, you mention Doug Hepner. Peters? Doug Peters yeah. is also a Jedi distributor. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I might him. If not, he wouldn't okay. feel bad either. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just—it was a good time just to get together to see. Uh, uh, Doug to is see the best painter. Maybe you talk to the phone, and, and yeah, Doug doesn't paint really well. I think. He, can't, <laughs> he can't get bent over anymore. I see him during different uh, meeting, trying to make a line with the paint stick. I got those pictures <laughs> or that video. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a while back. That's uh, I bet you that's twenty years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's it's just yeah. a matter of getting people together and sharing your knowledge, and and it was it was a great group, still a great group, and we're still going forward. You're right. Is there anything else uh, you gentlemen would like to uh, talk about? Well, the important of the the the, the painting it's it's to hiring good people for a painting ring and to 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 teach those people to use the product very well and 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 for me we we have to keep going in that direction and uh, i like i organize demo uh, two three demo every year different region of the province of quebec we are the way i organize it's i met the uh, seven or ten ring and they send me those those guy and and I paint the ring in front of him and I show him how to do it. It it's the only way to 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 get a better uh, quality of eyes and and show him some different video. But now more and more we have some with the uh, with those podcasts and those uh, video on YouTube. People could see and learn more. It's more, much easy, and uh, no reason to don't do a, a good sheet of ice for me. Yeah. Uh, so really, it's we still I still believe in the training programs and the seminars, and the if you show people how to do it, 
you can see that all of a sudden it dawns on them. This isn't too hard. It's easy to make a great looking sheet and you want it to stay that way all year round. So it really is an education program that we pass on generation to generation or so it seems anyways. The new kids come in and in some cases they have they don't have that education to actually put in a sheet of ice. Well, to wrap oh, okay. up uh, this uh, fireside discussion, as you put it, Dave, yep. um, well, it's pretty obvious that you both of you share the same passion and the same pride upon workmanship. Both of you aim at customer satisfaction and customer education. We hope this podcast was interesting. If you would like to know more about Jet Ice or Zamboni, Robert Wello, you can visit either website where you will find an array of photos and information. For Jet Ice, you can visit jetice.com. And for Robert Wello, you can visit arenazone.com slash en for English, because it's, it's also in French. And uh, you'll find more about uh, the two companies. Thank you very much, uh, Robert and Dave. Thank you oh, very pleasure. much for being here. Thank you, Dave, and no see problems. you one day on a ring somewhere. All right. See you soon, guys. Take care. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.